delightful, and oh, so soothing. It's Sacramento Smooth Jazz. Well, welcome back to Sacramento Smooth Jazz. This is Michael Andrews, and as I promised you, I have special guest Kieli Minucci, guitarist, and going back to with special effects back in the 80s, done some amazing things over the years, worked with so many people, and you've heard of him, of course, but you need to know that since he's began, he's worked with so many people. He's not only recorded with special effects, but he's also done a number of things. And, and he's a producer, composer, writer. He's done things, of course, with Angela Bofill, Roberta Flack, Chaka Khan, Noel Pointer. I can go on and on with a number of, of individuals that he has worked with over the years. And you would just be amazed. And of course, but I'll just say just for the for, for the heck of it, too. He, Angela Bofill, I think I mentioned Mark Anthony we, as we go away from the jazz genre, but also Will Downing. You know, Russell Gunn, you know, Lionel Hampton, you know, uh, Enrique Iglesias, Jennifer Lopez, Cheryl Lynn, Marion Meadows. So you see, he transcends various genres because he's that talented. And I want to welcome him to Sacramento Smooth Jazz today. Kaylee, how are you today? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you so much for having me and, and for that nice intro. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that you had some time for us today. I know you're, you're a busy man, so I won't take up too much of your time. But uh, what keeps you busy these days? What's going on? Well, I mean, right now I am getting ready to go on tour. Early November, I'll be playing in Philadelphia at South. That's Gerald Easley's place. And uh, and then also in New York, which is my hometown at the Cutting Room. Nice. And that's that's November 10th and 11th. So um, then I'm doing an, a splinter gig with, uh, with uh, a bunch of great players out in Phoenix uh, on, on the 13th. So. But that kind of wraps it up for me for the year. Other than that, I'm I'm just kind of uh, knee deep into uh, a new recording project, which is kind of like uh, you know, like kind of fast jazz guitar kind of stuff I'm doing with uh, with uh, another producer. Really enjoying that. It's definitely given me a tongue twister on the fingers there. Yeah, you you've done some amazing things with so many different artists that transcends different genres, which really just speaks of your talent, speaks of your gift. You know, is there a specific genre that you like more than anything else? Is this something that you like to really lean into a little bit more than others? Well, as a as a player, um, I I really enjoyed, uh, you know, I guess I should just say when I get to do stuff that I really haven't done before, for instance, um, the singer Mesa, who who a lot of folks know, of course, uh, she works with producer Chris Davis, uh, Chris Big Dog Davis, and they asked me a couple of months back to play uh, lay some guitar down on a beautiful song of hers, a new song of hers that's going to come out soon called Spirit. And there was no guitar part to read or anything. They just asked me to come up with, you know, kind of come up with it and gave me some general ideas. And I really enjoy that because uh, it. I could see that there was a certain style that the song needed to be played in and a certain sound instrument, certain sounding instrument that I was given the freedom to pick. But I was able to come up with my own parts and kind of craft it. And uh, and what they did was, um, you know, they instead of like uh, really working with me on, you know, part by part, they just had me do uh, different variations. So they had all of these different guitar parts that I had done. and. Uh, the style of the music was a little bit like folk R&B, you know, kind of a, a lot of acoustic guitar and electric electric guitars mixed. It was really interesting for me. So that that's an example of a, of a kind of project I really enjoy. Uh, and I should say that the, the most enjoyable is, of course, when you have a live recording session where everybody's in the studio together. Those are the best. Oh, yeah, because now you get to really improvise and keep certain parts in that you didn't have any intention on even hearing. And then all of a sudden you hear these different parts coming in. You're like, yeah, we got to keep that. So I'm sure a lot of that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're just vibing off the other musicians and, and mm -hmm. you know, and anything can happen and you're there in front of each other. You know, this uh, during, you know, during the pandemic, there was a lot of recording. A lot of us just recorded alone at home, you know, because we weren't getting together and doing things for a minute. And that's fine. That results in a different kind of thing, which is also good. But, as far as the enjoyable part, you know, the whole thing with music is association with other people. You know? So live gigs are great and recording projects where you're all together in the studio is, is really the best. Now, you mentioned the pandemic and a lot of artists were doing different things, of course, recording at home. Some were doing things online and some were just resting. You know, what were you doing for the most part and what were you desiring to do besides obviously play? 
Was it, did you get an opportunity to rest or what was going on with you? Well, I, actually, I was on tour in Denver when we got shut down. It was the middle of March of that year of 2020. So, and we had just released the new special effects record, which was called All Stars. A lot of folks might remember that one. And so we were touring that record and introducing folks to some of the music from that record. And then we were shut down. It didn't really, I mean, it didn't really stop everything because when I first got home and really things got very, very quiet for a few weeks, I have a, I'm fortunate that I have a home studio. So I just did a lot of writing. And during the year and a half, the first year and a half of the pandemic, I, I produced two records. I did the first, I did the solo album that I that I released this year, which is called Someone Singing. It's more of a acoustic kind of solo project of mine uh, under my own name. And then I did the new special effects record, which is our 40th anniversary. And it came out in April of this year called 2022. So I was real busy during the pandemic in the studio and you know, I was still getting together with other musicians and recording their part. And, you know, it, was, it just seemed like a great opportunity to do that because we weren't traveling as much as we had been. If you just tuned in, folks, you're I'm having a conversation with guitarist and world renowned composer, producer, Kelly Minucci. And with special effects, you guys have heard about him and he is here with us just sharing and uh, just. But a lot of people who want to know, you know, the special effects, you know, I know the story, but. Give us a backstory with respect to Kelly Minucci, special effects, things of that nature. How did that begin and, and how does it keep how does it continue to go when they hear what special effects? What does that mean? Oh, wow. Well, thank you for asking. Yeah, um, the project started in 1982, actually. That was when I got word that there was a musician in New York, percussionist named George Jinda, who was interested in meeting me. He had heard some of my playing. And a mutual friend introduced us and, and George and I spent some time getting to know each other and writing some music and getting together with some other musicians and doing some playing. And we tried to land a record deal so that we could, you know, so we could write and produce a project that we had dreamed of. And about three months after I met him, we, we got that to happen. And so it was uh, August of, 20, of 1982, that's 40 years ago that we went into the studio and recorded our first songs. That record, which was just called, actually it was called Special Delivery. We had to change the name when we when we released it uh, in the States though, because apparently somebody already had that name. So it came out in 82 and 83 in, in Europe because the, the label was a European label, but we, we got GRP Records uh, in New York to, to distribute that record in 1984 here. And that was significant because, uh, because uh, GRP Records uh, was a up and coming label owned. A lot of folks, of course, have heard of them. They're kind of legendary at this point, but that was uh, Dave Grusin, the film composer and pianist, and, and Larry Rosen, uh, who was the producer and drummer. And they, they owned the label. And uh, so we, we had our first record come out uh, on that label in the States in 1984. And then we immediately, you know, signed a contract in Modern Manners and Slice of Life. and. Mystique and all these other records that followed it uh, for the next few years. And uh, that was the start of the band. So by the time it was like 1985, we were touring. We were doing a lot of shows with Spyra Gyra, uh, a lot of bands, you know, I mean, Miles Davis and Pat Metheny and Weather Report. We were we were out there touring with all these guys. And it was a five piece band. It was George Jinda on percussion, of course, and then myself on guitars. and. We had a different lineups of musicians. Every every few years, we'd lose a guy and have to replace him because, you know, everybody was moving forward in their careers and kind of kept going, man. There's like a lot of stuff, a lot of stories in between then and now. But fast forward to now, the lineup of the group is a little different. George is no longer with us. He's been unfortunately gone for many, many years. So the band now is myself on guitar still, and I'm, you know, music director. And Joel Rosenblatt uh, is our drummer. We have both Nelson Rangel and Eric Marienthal uh, handling the horn parts. Um, uh, Jay Rowe and Lau Tizer are the keyboardists, and Dave Lavolsi and sometimes Gerald Veasley on bass. Karen Briggs on violin very often. Sometimes Regina Carter on violin, and and we have uh, we've added a vocalist. Occasion we have Elliot Yamin uh, perform with us, and some folks might remember Elliot as one of the American Idols. So, you know, the show is still a mix of the older songs that you might know and love and some new stuff and a cover, couple of cover tunes. You know, we've really evolved over the years. Wow. You, that's that's the three minute answer. <laughs> that, that's OK. And, you know, and that's that's the that's the things in which our, our listeners want to know is yeah. the, the history of it. And 
you know, how everything began. And you know, speaking of how everything began, you know, why the guitar? For me? Yeah. Oh, well, why wow, the guitar? How did, that, how did that come to now be? Now you're going way back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what inspired you? I'll tell you, man, this, it, the way I remember it is that my, my dad, my dad came over from Italy um, when my family's Italian and he, he loved everything American music, George Gershwin, Nat Cole, Cole Porter, you know, and so I grew up, he was a pianist and I grew up in a house with a lot of piano. So I studied piano, I'm five, six, seven years old studying piano. But I don't remember who, who how it happened, but I ended up with these I, I loved the way electric guitars looked. I was just, or any guitar, I loved the wood. And I particularly loved the chrome, you know, the chrome, the designs, the metal. The, the, and, and it was kind of the same with cars. Like in the late sixties, a lot of cars had a lot of crazy colors and they had chrome, a lot of chrome on them. And I was just really attracted to the way the guitars looked and the way that cars looked. And um, my folks uh, let me and my sister go to a YMCA music thing. And I remember there was some kid there. I mean, I had a little acoustic guitar in my hand, but there was some other guy there who had a, some green electric guitar with four pickups on it. And it was like, man, I was just like blown away by the way the whole thing looked. All those buttons and controls. What do they all do? You know, what is... And then Jimi Hendrix, like, what is he making his guitar sound like that? And... There were, you know, there were so many elements going on. I mean, I'm seven, eight years old and, and you know, starting to get into it. And um, and then my uh, my folks and I think my grandfather helped out. They bought me a Gibson guitar when I was like, you know, 10. And I still I still have that guitar. It's it's a beautiful Gibson SG. Uh, it's uh, 1969, I believe. No, I was a little older. I was 11 or 12. And, uh, and, and that was it. I mean, I started playing in a band when I was 12 and I still play keyboards to this day, but I really made a strong switch. I went right to guitar and it was only guitar from that point on. From that point on. And the fact that you still have the original one that you got, it's just, I know that's just really sentimental to you and it's just really profound overall. Now, now folks, if you just tuned in, I'm, I'm speaking with guitarist and just world renowned composer, producer Kieli Minucci and he, you know you've heard about him with special effects and he's been all over the world so Kieli you have worked with so many people you have performed on stage with so many people is it is it is it fair to say that there's one or two performances or or experiences on stage that just stand out to you oh so many of them really and you know thank you you know again for asking I mean you know, most of the time I'm playing with my own band, you know, with, with special effects. And, you know, we we did a show this past year at the Winter Park Jazz Festival in Denver that was very, very memorable for me. You know, not only a great audience, but a big sound on stage and a good, you know, I think the best shows are mainly because you feel like you're connecting with the musicians on stage and that's somehow being transferred to the audience, you know. But a lot of the real memorable stuff that you might be referring to happened when I was younger. Like, for instance, there was a brief period in my life right when Special Effects was a brand new band in the early 80s that I played guitar with Lou Reed and, you know, Take a Walk on the Wild Side with Lou Reed. And I was invited to play Farm Aid. It was the first Farm Aid. It was 1985. So that was Willie Nelson and John Mellencamp who produced that show and that was, you know, they still have those, but those was, was the first one they had it out in Illinois. And then we flew out in a Learjet from New York and landed in, in Champaign, Illinois. And we got 18 minutes or whatever it was on stage in front of like 90,000 people. Now that's a lot different than playing, you know, contemporary jazz music. Normally you don't play for those kinds of crowds, in contemporary jazz, but just going out there with a guy that famous, you know, and the video, all that videos on YouTube, you know, if people ever want to look up Farm Aid 1985, Lou Reed. Yeah. You know, you're going to see me playing the same guitar I have now. And it was something I'll never forget. You know, I was I was terrified and excited all at the same time, you know. 90,000 people. That's definitely, that's memorable for sure. Oh, it was great. It was great. He actually, he had... He, at the time, he asked me to stay in the band and go on tour, but I, I actually said no because I was trying to develop my own thing. You know, you, you know, one door opens, another door closes. I don't know. I don't know what would have been different in my life 
had I done that. But, you know, the path I chose was to focus on my own career with with special effects. And that didn't that didn't stop me, though, from getting to, you know, work and record with a lot of other pop artists over the years. So that turned out really nice. Nice indeed. I want to I want to thank you for just hanging out with us for a few minutes and getting us uh, giving us an opportunity to know a little bit more about you and uh, your music and your history. Uh, I can't thank you enough. It's just been informative and just a great experience to, to hear from you. Any final words that you want to uh, impart into our listeners? Maybe those who are inspiring to be a, a, a guitarist or a musician as a whole. Any any insight? Wow. Thank you for asking, Michael. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm a I'm a real. Everyone who knows me knows that I'm I'm a I'm a doer. You know, I mean, I have I have dreams and things I think about, but but it's it's you know really about taking the action. So if you're if you know, like in my case, I didn't I didn't have dreams and aspirations to be well known, nothing like that. I just wanted to play good guitar, and I just sort of I've just shown up and kind of flowed into each situation that I'm in. However, there is practicing and there is learning your instrument and really learning it well, and you know just being prepared. You know, so for those are, who are out there, no matter what your instrument is. You know, learning the rudiments of the instrument and and material, learning the material and how to play, and getting together with other people, and you know, letting music be the magic that it is. It's communication. It's a combination of really learning the skill and also learning the skill of of working with others. And then, and the joy comes from that. You know, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing that starts to happen. So, you know, stay with it. And uh, you never know what's around the corner. You know, that's that's definitely been the kind of life I've had. I mean, I'm, you know, I didn't know that special effects would be 40 years still touring, you know, and we tour a lot. So it's, you know, it's like I remember we used to open for Spyro Gyra when I was in my 20s. Wow. And the, our manager said, yes, yeah, Spyro is going to be playing the, the like you know, the retired <laughs> retirement homes at some point, you know, but no, 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 they're. They're out there, you know, Jay Beckenstein still got all of his guy, his guys all touring, man, 45, 50 years later or whatever. And, you know, that's that's very inspirational to me. So I think what we want to do is inspire each other and, and help each other out and, you know, keep pushing, you know, nudge each other along so that we can, you know, have a have an amazing life, man, and spread it. Man, that's great insight, great wisdom. I can't thank you enough. And I know our listeners are thankful to have heard you today. I want to thank you again for just hanging out with me and uh, our listeners. I look forward to perhaps having you back again. And I'm looking forward to seeing you perform live at a number of your events. Are you on social media at all? How can people get and keep in touch with you? Sure. Um, you know, I have the, the band's website is, well, first of all, Special Effects and Kelly Minucci is on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of that stuff where, you know, all you got to do is plug it in and you'll find it. It's it's everywhere. And we have uh, on YouTube, of course, we have a channel and the website of the group is called It's My First Name. It's Kieli Music. Nice. So it's called Kieli Music dot com. And that's where, you know, all of the stuff is. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely on social media. Fantastic. Very very active on that and yeah thank you again for having me it was nice chatting with you yeah thank you thank you so much it was, it was a pleasure speaking with you and we look forward to having you again but let's do this let's turn to your latest cd entitled 2022 and the tracks entitled everything and anything
for listening to Sacramento Smooth Jazz. To continue listening to Smooth Jazz 24-7, follow Sac Smooth Jazz on social media and listen by going to sacsmoothjazz.fm. Thank you.